I know it's been 15 years since we filmed together, no. but I don't know how long it's no, been it since been the show 15, ended. No, since we started, not since. No, since we started, okay. since we okay. started. Like exactly. Right. So we met, we met 15 years ago. I think I was 20 and I was in college and you had just moved to LA. And since we've gotten married and we've had kids and we've launched businesses wow. and so much has happened. And I would say the question that I get asked the most mm-hmm. of all time is, are you still friends with Lauren? Yeah. I know. And I'm like, it's, it's just so interesting. Cause that's what I'm, what people really want to know, right? Like that's how people really got to know us was together in the teen vote closet. And people always want to know the behind the scenes and like, if there was any drama. And so my answer to them is always like, like I was telling you on the phone, like it's, you know, it's friends that you w- went to college with like good friends that you had really special experiences with that you always have love for, but that you don't always keep in touch with. Like, does, does anybody, has anyone ever asked you that oh, yeah. if we're still friends? And like, how would you answer? How do you answer? I, I, wait, Whitney, you put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I know, to I think actually like what you said is, is perfectly describing it. Like I have so much love in my heart for you. And like, we shared this really weird, unique thing. And, and I think it is, it's like, it's like old college friends where it's like, you know, I'll always remember you like that. And, and I'll never have that with anybody else. Do you know what I mean? Like, totally. Like nobody really knows the stuff that we know. Or like, you know, it's like that thing. It's just these roots that are always very strong. And even when I'm talking to you now, I'm like, oh, it feels totally normal. Like I'm just sitting with you in that closet again. So that feels really nice. (laughs) I know that closet. Um, So yeah, because for me, I mean, and I wanted to touch on this a little bit, but like I, we... I had a friend that I had a falling out with that you then became best friends with. And I always thought for this, all this time, I've been telling myself this story that because of that falling out with this friend, that that tinted how you felt about me. And so I have felt like this insecurity that maybe you thought certain things about me that may not have been true or that I didn't have the chance to explain. And so I've always thought that maybe you were upset with me for what happened with that friend. I, I, I This is, it's so funny how there are things that we kind of like have in our mind and we're like, well, that's, that's what it is. And, mm-hmm. um, and again, obviously we talked about this, but like, yeah, I wish we'd had this conversation because when you said this, I was like, I actually have no idea what you're talking about. And <laughs> so crazy. Yeah, and like, again, like I have so much love for you and I, it's, it's one of those things where like, I, I stopped filming and then I just kind of needed a clean break for a minute to right. kind of emotionally recover and, um, I took some time off and then obviously moved out of LA. And so I have so many friends that like, I love catching up with and I get to see them every once in a while. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's, I feel like I'm not describing this correctly. (laughs) No, it's fine. No, you, you totally are. It's, it's, it's those things, these stories that we tell ourselves that we've told ourselves for so long. And it's like, I was talking about this with Timmy and he was like, you always just have to clear things up or tell people how you feel and get the response. Cause it's like for years, I've been living with this feeling that you. I hate hearing this. I hate it so much. I know. I'm, but it, but it's because it's that that whole situation was so hard for me. And then, because you guys became such close friends, I was like, oh my god, now Lauren's just gonna think I'm the worst person because of maybe she thinks that I'd like drop this friend or whatever it was. And and so, anyways, I feel like I'm so happy that I told you and got off my chest, and that it's something that's so not a thing, and it's something that I need to continue to tell myself, like stop all always believing these things that you tell yourself. Like you have to, you have to get validation from the other person. It's just not healthy for me to hold on to that. 
Yeah. I mean, I hate saying this right now, but like hindsight is always yeah. funny. <laughs> like, yeah. It's one of those things you're like, oh, I wish I would have said something or done something. But also like when you feel yeah. that way, like that's such a terrible feeling where you're like, well, I don't want to like, I don't know. Confrontation is always really challenging for me too. So I'm always like maybe Same. a little time and like, it'll fix itself. I don't know. But, yeah. Um, I mean, I think I also, like, I also felt like, you know, once the show was over, you, not, not that you wanted any, nothing to do with it. Cause I know that it wasn't that, but that you, you tried to remove yourself obviously a little bit because it was something, it was so like personal for so many years and you were just, you know, you couldn't have that magnifying glass on your life anymore. And so I think that I fell into that bucket of like, maybe she just doesn't really want anything to do with me anymore because like, I'm part of the show that, you know, that she wants to kind of move away from. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I think, yeah, again, like it was such an odd time for me and, and I, I did it for as long as I could. And it was one of those things where I was like, okay, well, this isn't like a healthy space for me anymore. Yeah. And, like I need, I need to kind of like live my own life and do this. And I really like, I, I kind of like removed myself from that whole scene, really. I think it was just, and, and I apologize for ever making you feel that way because obviously it had nothing to do with you personally. It's just me being totally. like, okay, like I need to live my life. I lived a certain way for so long. And like as much mm-hmm. as I am appreciative and I love you and I love so many people we worked with, like, you know, mm-hmm. there is like certain like toxic elements there and, and it gets for really sure. hard. And I was like, okay, I got to, I got to just like step away from this world and like kind of heal in a way and like figure out who I want to be. Because again, like we started so young and I was like, it's like, it's such a time where you're figuring out who you are. And I was like, I did it in such a, such a weird way. Like I need to do this on my own now with like no other voices Mm -hmm. or just like literally living my life for me. So, um, and I heard you felt the exact same way when you stepped away. It's like a very weird thing where you're like, what now? It's so (laughs) weird. Yeah. And it's like, who am I? And like, how am I going to make things happen now? Because for so long, there was a whole team of people making things happen for us. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, we actually now need to be the creators of our own destiny. What, what is like a day in the life right now? Like what does quarantine look for you right now with two kids? So right now (laughs) I have like, right behind me is our, our living room. I have a bounce mm-hmm. house in our living room. I have like no all way. the furniture shoved to the sides and like a huge bounce house because the air quality has been so bad. Right. My right. It right. hasn't been outside in a week and he's going oh crazy. My God. Like my, my youngest Charlie, like he, you know, he doesn't, he's like crawling around. He's fine. Like I'm sure he'd like to go outside, but it's not as big of a deal. But Liam, who's three is so much energy. Like when yeah, they get, so much. Yeah, Our kids yeah. are like the same yeah, age. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I took him on a walk this morning. I had to get him out because I was just like. a little I, better. I checked my air quality app and I was like, okay, feel, I like let him out into the yard today. But I've just like, I've been keeping him pent up inside. He's going crazy. And I'm like, I don't want to stick him in front of a TV. Like, I don't know what to do. And so I just dragged the bounce house that we got. And like our first week of quarantine, I was like, we have to do something with them. And it was like, like the best $200 I've ever spent. I was just. Yeah, I know. We got one for outside too. Yeah. We got one for for our backyard too. But then I don't know. Timmy got so annoyed with it because Sonny wasn't using it. Like Sonny is like a very typical toddler where, where he'll use something for a couple of days and then he's sick yeah. of it. And Timmy was like, I don't want this eyesore thing hanging out anymore. And so he ended up giving it away, but we should have just put it in our yeah, house. Well, yes. I dragged it in and I was like, there you go. Like bounce it out. Oh my God. Just like- so the two of them will spend hours in there? Uh, no, no, no. Charlie is. It's too scary. It's no. just, he's just, yeah. you know, they get so rough. I'm just like, I can't put a baby in there with you. <laughs> yeah. I, I go in there with him. <laughs> yeah. My cardio. Yeah. I'm like, oh, not a shame. So what do you, like, what's the first thing you do when you wake up? Like, and what does your day look like? Like a typical day? Um, gosh, it's so different every day. So we, we work out of a house that's across the street from us. So we essentially set up mm-hmm. offices. And, um, so we usually wake up and get ready. And then my husband and I work together. Um, <laughs> you <know>? yeah. <laughs> um, and so we get up and, you know, we walk to the office and we work and then we 
you know, well, or we, you know, the kids, we get the, we get the kids up and we yeah. do morning with them. And then, yeah, we go to work and then we come home and have lunch as a family and then work and nice. come home. You know, obviously we're not traveling this year or doing much. So, um, usually every day is pretty different, but now it's kind of always the same. It's a lot of, I know, I know. a lot of zoom calls, a lot of, uh, just like the amount of boxes and samples that show up at our house every day is wild. Um, oh my God. Yeah. Ugh, so, so your husband works with you, like with all of your businesses. Mm-hmm. So he was working at my, oh my law God, firm amazing. and then, and he was like, you know, if you work at a law firm, you're just constantly gone. And, and he was actually working on my stuff, but a lot of other, um, a lot of other people's as well. And so finally after a couple mm-hmm. of years, like very before we had kids, we were like, you know what, let's like, you're already, you already work on everything I do. Like what if, you just do that full time. You help me run the business. It was becoming too much for me. And I was like, that way, yeah. like we can, you know, see each other <laughs> and make our own schedules and have like flexibility with a family. And it's been fortunately really nice. I know it's been really nice for us too. That's so funny. How did you guys meet? Did you meet because he was at the law firm? Is that no, how you met? No, he was at the law firm business? because oh. he met, uh, he met my lawyer and then they became friends and then it, uh, okay. He was in school. So I met him. He was a law student when I met him. Uh, oh, I feel like I I knew this, but I kind of forgot. He was going to USC law like, and I met him through, yeah. it, it was a blind date, like a setup on Valentine's day. We like all went out as a group. And my, my friend, yeah. my friend was just like, I had this guy I'm going to law school with. And I, she said, she's really cute. She's, she's Southern. She was like, y'all think the same stuff is funny. I think you'll get along. Like, basically, like <laughs> I don't get your jokes, but like you guys both seem to get them. Um, and yeah. The rest is history. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, how, how do you guys like make time for just the two of you? Like, have you gone on any dates, like anything fun that you guys are doing to, it's, it's you know, because list. it's, <laughs> Yeah, (laughs) we'll get to it. No, we're actually like, we need to, now that like things are starting to open up, we're like talking about, I mean, he was like, do you want to go camping? Like we like, we don't really want to go to a hotel yet, but I was like, I really don't want to camp. That sounds terrible. So (laughs) we're trying to figure out like what a date even looks like. Um, I mean, obviously our time together, I mean, we spend most of the day together and then you know, once the kids are down, we have that time. But I mean, I'm sure you know as right. well. It's like you also want to find time for yourself. So, you know, we're we're doing that 2020 dance. Yeah, no, totally. When after we have dinner or after we put Sunny down, like I'll go take a shower, do my night routine for 30, like 30 minutes, have my own yeah. just sane time. And then he plays a video game for like a half hour. And then we meet up and like, we'll sit on the couch and watch TV and whatever. I don't expect like, it's, it's a little bit too much to expect like date night and the whole thing, but just to have some time, just the two of us sitting on a couch is like enough for me. But we're counting that as a date. We do that every night. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So we have date night every night. Go us. We're killing it. Um, into your businesses, you are running so many different businesses. You have your clothing line and now kids clothing line and your makeup line. What have been some of like the notable highs and lows of, of your businesses? Um, like uh, I know for me, like closing down Whitney Eve was obviously a very emotional, hard thing for me after my dad passed away. And um you know, there's been obviously various things that have happened, but can, does anything come to mind? Like any amazing moments where you're like, I can't believe this is happening or anything like not so great. (laughs) Well, this, this year was a challenge, um, Mm -hmm. you know, for so many people. And, and again, like I, I feel really lucky for, for where we're at and everything we have, Mm -hmm. but, um, we were launching two lines this year and, through COVID, you know, it held up production. Like I had a kid's line, like stuck on a boat. Like it was just everywhere. And then it was like, even just getting lines physically done, there was also, you know, we had to consider, is it appropriate to launch a line right now? Right. Um, There's just so many factors. It's like, you know, for our kid's line, it was like, there's, there's so much tragedy happening right now. And a launch, there's something about a launch that feels really celebratory and Mm -hmm. it feels weird to do. But at the same time, like 
you want to be sensitive. You want to do launches when they feel appropriate, but also people's jobs depend on this. And like, you don't want to contribute to people like not having employment. It's just like a, it was just messy. And we had the same thing with the the beauty line. It was pushed, gosh, like six months, like the launch. Mm -hmm. It was, Mm -hmm. and, and it was, it was hard. I mean, we got, we got creative with a lot of stuff. We had to figure it out, but it was like every day there was something and yeah. I mean, we were, I mean, we're lucky to have jobs. So like, we're not really in a place to complain, but it was, it was challenging. Those, were, Yeah, that was challenging. And what about moments like a career moment where you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening to me. This is so cool. Uh, showing at New York Fashion Week was amazing. I can't yeah. believe I was able to do that. Um, <laughs> especially now because like, I don't, I don't know what Fashion Week looks like. Like, is that does that happen again? Like, or when it's such a, I'm just really grateful that I had the opportunity to do it. Um, that was a wild moment. Yeah. Well, I had the same experience with you. Like I had a a rent the runway, um, collection launch and it was supposed to launch in April. And obviously we couldn't launch it then because nothing was going to be able to be shipped. And it was like, oh my God, we're going to be launching a clothing line. This feels so inappropriate. And so we launched it a couple months later. And even so I still felt like, does this feel right? But the same as you, it's like, all, all this hard work has gone into it. So many people's lives depend on it. Like maybe there's some way that this can bring joy into people's homes. I found myself really enjoying, even if it's only a few times, like enjoying putting myself together a little bit or like putting on some makeup. I think the beauty line, actually, it's a perfect time to launch it because people still are like putting together a quick natural look, especially for zoom calls and everything that they have to do. Um, but I, and the, the kids clothes, like so kids are constantly growing yeah. and need new clothes. Yeah, you know, like we may not need new clothes, but kids do. I mean, oh, I've just been my, it's so funny. I just buy tops now. Cause I'm like, this is all, yeah. this is all anybody <laughs> see. I have sweats no. on right now. Oh, I actually have <laughs> pants on, but I don't have. Good for you. <laughs> um, what has been like the greatest business lesson that you've learned? Uh, the greatest business lesson is, um, I think it's just how important relationships are. And I mean Mm -hmm. that in different ways. One, like when you're partnering with someone, like it's, I've worked with friends, it's worked out. It hasn't worked out. Like, and also Mm -hmm. I've, I've worked with someone and, you know, done a good job of maintaining that relationship that, you know, the business relationship ended, but then it led to something else later. Like relationships are everything. Um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned. It's just, you know. Yeah. I think working with friends is really tricky. Like I, I advise against it as as someone that worked with my family, um, love my family to death, but like would never do that again and would, uh, would tell or would urge people not to do that just because you just want to love your family and friends for who they are. Mm -hmm. You don't want anything else to tint your relationship. And so sometimes I'm like, oh, but Timmy and I are doing this together and you and William are doing this together and we're making it work, but there's something different about that. Yeah. Well, it's you're building something together and you're building a life together. So like it is different. And I totally get what you're saying. The only like I've, yeah, I've worked with friends and it's not always gone great, but the exception I have there is I work with, have you ever met Hannah? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have worked with Hannah for years and she's one of my best friends and we run a nonprofit together. And I think the fact that it's a nonprofit sort of changes that there's, you know, none of us are are working towards like a financial gain. Like we're, we're Mm -hmm. just working to help other people. And we have that in common. Mm -hmm. I think she's also just a great person. And we were really clear from the get-go, like these are our roles and this is, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And, um, Mm -hmm. that's been a really nice relationship and I love working with her. So I think there is ways to make it work. It's just, I think you have to be really thoughtful before you enter that relationship. And you also need to know when to call it. 
Yeah, yeah it's okay that's being true. Like, you know what? This isn't working out. Yeah, I agree. It is very important. And I feel like you have to listen to your gut too at the beginning. Like if something is feeling a little bit off at the beginning, like really listen to that. Do you have any mantras that you've heard or that have stuck with you? Like for me, sometimes when I'm in a rough moment, I just continue to tell myself like there's no way out but through, you know? Like, is there anything yeah. that you tell yourself? I... I think, I think you've said it really beautifully. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily have a mantra, but I think that is my attitude. Like I think Mm -hmm. knowing that things are temporary is always helpful. And, uh, I think when I'm going through something that's challenging, I always, I just try and take, I know this sounds so cliche, but I just try and take a minute to be like, but there's so much good. Like, don't feel bad for yourself. That's not productive. Like no, no one feels bad for you. Like this, this sucks it'll, you know, move on. <laughs> right. Like keep things in, per- in, in perspective. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 But that always takes time. Like you always have to have a night of sleep. Like don't respond to things right away. If you're feeling iffy about stuff, you know, like there's nothing oh, but not a little bit of that. time <laughs> can't heal. <laughs> you're like the person that writes back right away. Yeah. Uh, it's Yeah. It's probably not a great thing about me. I just like, I take my business so personally. So like, yeah. Sometimes I, I'm a little quick to pull the trigger. I'll send an email and William will be like, that's super professional. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I have to stop myself too. Cause like I'll write back and it won't really make sense. I won't read it over. I like won't have proper punctuation. And then I send it and I'm like, oh my God, I look like such an idiot. But like I, so now I, I've, I've had to retrain myself to take some time to not just, right back like that. Do you have any mentors or like life coaches or anyone that, that helps you work through any of this stuff? No, that sounds so nice. Do you have a mentor? I don't have a mentor, but I actually just hired a business coach. Yes. Because I, I feel like a little bit scattered, like kind of how I'm sure you feel you are wearing so many different hats Mm -hmm. and there's not like a ton of strategy. It just feels like I'm, there's a lot of incoming, but I'm not like setting goals or checking up on things or really paying attention to like who my follower is and what is performing well. Like it's, it, so I, I'm, I'm hiring someone to like help me pay attention to all those things. That's great. Yeah. I'll let you know. Yeah, how it let goes. me know. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the same way. Like I, I kind of lose sight of that sometimes and I have to kind of reel things in and like, look at the bigger picture. Um, I do love numbers though. You do not like in a math way, like in a, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're talking about like a consumer, like I'll get reports that are like thick and I will read through those. I think it's so interesting. So fascinating. And then you'll design based off of yeah. those numbers, right? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, like I love my job. I want to be creative and do stuff. And like, I, I love creating things that I think are really beautiful, but I, I think like a customer tells you what they want. They right. bought a lot of something. I'm like, oh, okay, they liked that. So we should do that again. Like, it's just stuff like that totally. to kind of like guide you. Um, yeah, I love looking at like selling history and stuff. It's just- And analytics, yeah. yeah. What are you most excited about right now? Like in your business? Right now, um, I'm really excited about beauty. It was, it's, it's honestly, it was like two and a half years of work and it was a weird way to launch, but it's been really fun. Um, we have a bunch of new products coming out. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I launched like a really small collection and I, I, yeah, tell me about it. So I did that on purpose again. Like I just said, like, I love to get feedback and I designed, Mm -hmm. I designed a collection for myself. I designed the type of things that I like. I like more natural makeup. I like things, Mm -hmm. um, that are easily applied. Most of my makeup goes on with my hands. Like, I was just mm-hmm. like, this is what I want. And I wanted to check all the things I was like, I want, I want to feel good about the products. I want to do like clean formulas and ethically sourced. I want all the packaging to be recyclable or, you know, um, eco-friendly. So I, mm-hmm. I designed into that, but I did it in a small way because like people love to give you their opinion. So it, yeah, yeah, right away they were like, you know, like this, don't like this, wish you had this. And so like, I have like a running list of requests and like, I'll always like message them back and be like, okay, but like, what color are you talking about? Do you like this? And they're like, oh, 
Yes. <laughs> cool. I'll submit that for you. <laughs> I think it's just so interesting. Like, I think if you take that feedback and, and grow with it, it's really helpful as opposed to like launching a huge line and going in blind, like want to learn right. about this customer and her needs. And um, so, yeah, so we launched pretty small and we're about to roll out some more products, but just like continuing to grow. Amazing. And it is, is it just direct to consumer like yeah. on laurenconrad.com or yeah, Lauren is the plan just to keep it straight direct to consumer? No, I think we obviously want to grow beyond that. I just wanted to do it this way, mm-hmm. you know, initially to, to have just like a really close relationship with that customer. What is, what is your beauty philosophy? <laughs> I think, I think you shouldn't take, you shouldn't take makeup too seriously. It's makeup to be mm-hmm. fun. Like I love to play with makeup. I think on an average day of like 10 minutes to get ready. So I don't, I don't do a ton of experimenting during the day, but like when, you know, when we were doing like girls nights or going out, like I love to like have fun and like do a, you know, a bold lip or like experiment with eyes. I, um, I don't know. Makeup should be fun. It should be like clothes. It's fun. Have your yeah, everyday wear, I agree. and then sometimes, like a little bit of a statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a beauty junkie, or do you like stick to basics? Like, are you one of those people that wants to try everything, or you have your faves? I have favorites for sure. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm really loyal. So, like, if I find a product, I will use it until it's discontinued. Like, I have. Oh my so god! Can things. you tell me? Oh my, can you tell me some of the things that you're like obsessed with? Um, There was a, I'm not going to remember the name. There was a Chanel bronzer that I absolutely loved. I wore it for years, discontinued it. No. I know. Um, What else? There was, uh, there was like my favorite eyeliner of all time. This is, this is really going back. I did a partnership with Mark, which is like, I remember so that their eyeliner I was obsessed with. They, they stopped making it. I bought them all off of eBay and I stuck them in my fridge <laughs> and I used them all until they were gone. And I was so sad using the last one. Oh my God. Well now hopefully yours is as good. Yeah. Well I took, yeah, I took, it's, it's different. Cause theirs was like a pen or a brush in a little pot and like it was different, okay. but I took the things that I liked about that and applied it to development of, of this one. So, okay. For an average day of quarantine, like what's your process? And if you can give any product call. Sure. So on a day where I have no zoom calls, I don't wear makeup. I like to give mm-hmm. my, my skin days off and I just like pile on product. And I all like, if I'm uh, working or doing something. No. Um, have you, Jillian Dempsey did this like gold bar. Does it vibrate? And it's like a cold bar. So like when I put all my product on, like I'll do it in the morning and then I'll like sit and be working. And I literally sit here and like use this all over my skin. It's so nice. It just like plumps it all in. Yeah. If it gets all your product in. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, if, if I'm not like on zoom or anything, I, I might like put on a little mascara or like a little lip and cheek sometimes. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't do much because I like to get my skin days off. But then when I'm doing mm-hmm. Zoom calls, it's just like a, it's kind of, it's like what I'm wearing right now. Right. Foundation. Which is just like foundation, blush, highlighter. It is. It's foundation, a little concealer here. Um, and then mm-hmm. a lip and cheek uh, and eyeliner and mascara and eyebrow pencil. Brows. Your brows are so thick and nice. They're real, they're real thick. They're, they're odd. They're thick and they're long, but like I get like patch, like thin patches. Spots. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, they're not really consistently They're They're kind of like old man brows. It doesn't really. Like yeah, same with mine. And I have to get mine done so badly. Um, okay. If you were on a deserted Island, what would be three beauty products that you would take with you? Ooh, okay. Sunscreen. Mm-hmm. What kind? Uh, what do I have right now? I have a few right now. I like beauty counter sunscreen. It's mm-hmm. a nice clean one. Um, I have one on my counter right now that I was using this burst. Do you ever use their stuff? Yeah. yeah burst is great. I like their day dissolving balm. I use that like oily balm. Ooh, I need to, to wash try my that. face. Um, yeah. It's really good. It's really moisturizing. So I would do obviously a sunscreen. I would do, um, I'd probably do like a lip and cheek and a mascara. Yeah, that's four, but I'll let you have No, four. a lip and cheek is one. Oh, right. Good it's call. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I use I use that on my um, I cheeks. Say, I thought that was it. It looks so good on you. Yeah, like, I used it. I loved it. It's just like it. I wanted like a, you know, like 
after you work out that like natural flush, I was like, I want that yes. color. Because every time after I work, I mean, I'm a little sweaty, but I'm like, that's what I want. To look like all the time. Yes. No, I loved it. It was really light. 